Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you all about Tarja's new album, In The Raw, out August 30th on Ear Music. The album has 10 tracks, 57 minutes in length, and this is her fifth full-length rock album. I know she's done other stuff, but as far as rock albums are concerned, and this to me is a rock album, this is her fifth full-length album. Now, this album to me is really eclectic in sound and in feel and in structure, and, and that allows the record to connect with a lot of different people. I feel that if you're a symphonic metal fan, if you're a metal fan, if you're a Tarja fan, or if you're a fan of good music, you're gonna connect with this record. There's just, there's enough there that everybody's gonna find something that you're gonna connect with musically on this record. You're gonna have some songs that are a little bit heavier, you're gonna have some songs that are more orchestration, piano driven, and then you're gonna have a lot that fall just in between those two. It just feels like it's a record that really throws a lot of different elements at you, keeps you on your toes. Every single song offers a unique structure, a unique sound, a unique approach, and that to me allows the record to stay fresh all the way throughout. Now, there's always the danger that you feel that the album is disconnected, is not compact, that is not linear in fashion. To me, that doesn't happen on this record for the simple fact that I feel like, like as it should, this is a record built around her voice. So you have her and her vocal performance as the pillar, as the foundation of the record, and then everything else, all the music, all the orchestration, all, all the song structure, everything else is there to enhance it and to take the most out of it. Because of that, the album is still interconnected. Even though the songs feel different, they feel like they fall under different genres perhaps, you don't feel a disconnect from track to track and the overall big picture of the record because you have that common denominator. You have her voice that's absolutely magnificent from the first to the last track. So that is the glue that holds this whole thing together. Now, as far as overall structure of the album, I really felt listening to this album that it, it, it gives you a sense of going down the river, the journey down the river of life, if you will, where you have some more turbulent moments, you have some more peaceful moments, some moments you enjoy the scenery around you, you take it all in, you reflect on life, you reflect on past experiences, you, you reflect on even on what's coming forward. So this record to me really gives you a glimpse into her soul and that drives this record home to the fans. I really feel like you're gonna feel a connection to the album because you, you, you almost, you're almost getting a glimpse into something you haven't seen before. What's behind the curtain? What's behind the singer? So I felt listening to this record, that connection, and I felt that I was really going down that journey, down the river of life, and having a glimpse of, of where she has been, of where she is, and where she is going. That is the connection that I had with this record. But she's not going on this journey alone. There are some guest vocalists on this record, Beyond Strid, Christina Scabia, and Tommy Karavecki, they're all guest vocalists on this album. And I really like the fact that she included three guest vocalists I wouldn't. I don't. Want, I wouldn't want more than that. You don't want to take it away from her record with too many guest vocalists on. But I really like the fact that she picked three that are very different from each other, and more important, different from her own voice. To me, that's extremely important. If you're going to have guest vocalists on your record, you want them to bring some added value. You want them to add something different that you're not able to provide yourself. And then you don't want those guest vocalists to have similar sounds within each other. You want them all to be different so that every single song that they uh, guest appear in feels completely different from the previous one. And that's what you got here. With with uh, with Beyond Strait, uh, the song that he's in is a little bit heavier. Uh, it has a little bit more of a, of a, of a heavy metal feel to it. Uh, and, and then you you the, she took the most out of Tommy. I really feel like that song has a, a lot of components that you get even from Camelot. So I really like that. And then with Christina, the same thing. She really was able to create a song where the two of them really work well in parallel with each other and really enhance each other's vocal performances. So to me, the choices of who she guested on the, on her record were extremely well played, extremely well done. She picked people that enhance her own vocal style, that have a different vocal style, and then overall enhance the power and the richness of this, of this record. So from that perspective, she couldn't have picked anybody any better. Now, as far as songs are concerned, I picked three songs that have a different feel from each other. Uh, I didn't want to pick songs that had similar structures or similar vibes. So I picked three songs that were very different, distinctive from, all, from each other. So I'm going to start with Tears and Rain. This to me is more of a symphonic metal song. It has a great melody, specifically in the chorus. The chorus is absolutely uh, beautiful as far as the melody is concerned is a little bit more stripped down uh, it's, it's a more stripped down uh, versus the verses it, it has a different vibe it, it, it feels a lot cleaner in the chorus versus the verses the chorus 
uh, not only has a great melody, it has great vocals, and the vocal delivery in the chorus mixed in with the melody that it has, it, it really is what captivates you, what drives you into this song. There are some layers, some background vocals that give some more thickness to the delivery. I really like that. I, I feel like this is a song that's so light in nature, so light in sound, that by adding those background vocals, those layers, really allow the song to feel, to pick up a little bit of, of thickness and heaviness here and there. That, that just gave the song a feel that it makes it more robust. This is definitely a song that has that dynamic of chorus and verses. It just feels that way. You have a much, uh, you have a very different dynamic between those two parts of the song, and they're very distinct. And it's very easy for you to tell that difference. But what that does is it really enhances the chorus. It really enhances the ability for you to connect with the track. Even the uh, the the vocal delivery on this song, there there's different elements. Not only the background vocals that they use sporadic. They didn't use it a lot. They really use it sporadic throughout the track. But even they used a little bit of electronic vocals as well, and that also picked up, allowed the song to pick up a different vibe, a different momentum, and it really changed the dynamic of the song. It just gave it gave the song a little bit of, of like I said, extra thickness, extra heaviness for a song that's extremely light, uh, light as a feather. It just absolutely, uh, but it's a song that has a great dynamic once again and, and just has a great momentum. I love this song. Now, my absolute favorite song on this record is You and I. I, I honestly, uh, if I was going to get married again, this would be my wedding song. Absolutely, I, 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 I could not believe how good this is. I'm having a hard time putting into words how good this song is. This is a love song. You can call it a ballad. I, to me, this is a love song. This song is one of the greatest love ballads ever written. Absolutely. I can I, I, I'm having a really hard time wrapping my head about how good this song is. This is a song that's pretty much has two elements, her voice and a piano. That's it. And you don't need much in order to create a song that will connect with anybody who has somebody that they love in their life. This song will do that for you. Absolutely amazing. This song has two dynamics though. The song starts out with the piano and the vocals and that's how it stays. The piano stays all the way throughout the song. Uh, it, it, but it, that's how it starts. A very stripped down, uh, a, a, a very clean feel to the song with just piano and vocals. Later on, uh, the orchestration comes in, the more symphonic elements are driven into the song just to give the song a more bombastic, a more over-the-top closing to the track. So I love how this song was constructed. I love the lyrics, I love the vocal delivery, and I love the fact that this is a piano vocal song all the way through, incredible love ballad, uh, love song, whatever you want to call it, all the way through. And then at the end, when you want to close off the song, you bring those symphonic elements that really enlarge the song, that take the song. It's almost like you open a present and the first the first two thirds of the song, you have the present. And then in that last third, you open the present, it just becomes larger than life. And that's what the symphonic elements do to this track towards the end. Absolutely magnificent. One of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard in my life. Incredible. Now, last but not least, Spirits of the Sea. What a different turn this song is. I mean, this is a much heavier uh, and somber song. I, I would say if, if Tario was to do a, a doom metal track or an industrial track, this is perhaps what it would sound like. I felt that it had a few doom elements in there. It had a few industrial elements in there specifically on, on the on the guitar sound, on how heavy they sounded. Uh, so it's a song that's that's very different as far as not only the sound, but also as far as the structure as in its built. It's a song that is very methodic, like I said, very somber. Even the way the vocals come at you, the vocals really don't come at you necessarily as angelic. They almost come more as haunting. Uh, it, it, there's, a, there's a little bit of, of pain in the delivery, if you will, and how the lyrics coming at you. The vocal performance really matches the style and the mood that the music sets for you. So the two really work well in parallel. And you would think a voice like hers would really elevate the song and will bring light into the darkness that this track has, but it doesn't. And, and the, the beauty of her voice in a song that has this really heavy and somber feel adds even more, it even adds more darkness to it. How beautiful it is and how bright it is that light has nowhere to shine, so it becomes really somber as well. So I really like that combination between the, the way the song sounds and how her vocals come across to the listener when you put them together. If you listen to the vocal track separated from the music, 
it's it's a, it's 180. It's completely different. When you put these two together, her voice mixed in with that somberness that the track has really becomes haunting. It becomes dark as well. And I really like that aspect. It, it almost gives you an introspect feel to the whole song. I absolutely love it. All right, guys, this is it. This is Taria in the Raw out August 30th. I absolutely love this album. And I want to say once again, you and I, one of the greatest songs, one of the greatest love songs ever written. I absolutely love this song. Once again, if I was getting married again, this would be my wedding uh, my wedding track. All right, guys, I want to hear from you now. Would, would it be your wedding track? Let me know in the comment section below. I always read your comments and I'll be getting back to you. And take care, guys.